stay tuned because next up we'll have David Charles Allen, Village Properties Realtor and host of The Hop. That's Home Ownership Podcast with the latest Santa Barbara real estate news. Hey, David. Welcome to The Hop. This is David Charles Allen, Realtor at Village Properties in Santa Barbara, California with my great friend and co-host, Patty Teal. I'm doing wonderful today, Patty. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderfully as well, David. Thank you so much for asking. That's good to hear. We'll jump right into how the weather is performing in Santa Barbara. We may get some rain in the next couple of days, just a little bit, and then weather back scattered throughout the 70s and sunny. So it's looking nice. Yes, that sounds beautiful. 70s is pretty perfect. Pretty nice. You can't beat that. And then in terms of some surf, we've had a slow period of surf these last couple of weeks. May get a little fun swell tomorrow, but we'll see how it turns out. So do you go online and look at the video of the surf before you head out? You know, they used to have like some free cameras that you could see online from Surfline. Mm -hmm. And now they want you just to make an account to see the free cameras. So I'm against that. And I'm definitely not going to pay to go see video. So I'll either drive by or I'll just look at the buoys and (laughs) that's that's smart, David, especially since you're so close there up on the Mesa. Yeah. And then the old fashioned way too, you can get a good prediction just just gauging what the surf's doing based on how the buoys are acting in the water. So Right, right. Okay. And then in terms of how interest rates are performing, we're at 4.25 for 30-year jumbo and 5% for 30-year conforming. So again, slightly tick up since last week. We'll see where it leads us. Yeah. I wonder if it's just going to keep gradually going up and up and up. Who knows? It seems that way. Inflation's so high right now. I don't know how they're going to affect interest rates in terms of inflation. Essentially, if with inflation so high, interest rates are lower than inflation. Depending how you look at it, it's almost free money in a sense. But Well, uh, I suppose in a sense, if you think of it that way, but you're right, everything has gone up. I'm really seeing it and feeling it. I was looking to buy some airline tickets actually to come back to Santa Barbara and see my friends. And uh, there was a particular weekend, some of them are getting together, but my goodness, I am not used to having to pay over a thousand dollars when it used to be more like four or five Oh, wow. Yeah, that's really expensive. With everything going on, too, people are going to start trying to travel more with the mask restrictions being gone, too. Oh, that's true, too. Mm -hmm. Uptake as well. Anyway, I'll have to decide whether I can squeak that much out or not. I really want to come, but I will come eventually. But I just don't know if I can come that particular weekend or not. I'm trying to figure it out. But it's just an example of prices going up. Yeah. And then you have to factor in lodging, which has gone crazy in Santa Barbara too. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd probably stay with a friend, thankfully, but but rental cars too, they are also very high. So it just ends up being a pricey few days. Yeah. Especially if it's only just a couple of days too. That's Mm -hmm. That's a big chunk of money. Right. And then in terms, jumping back into real estate, how the listings have performed, we had 43 new listings five price changes, 23 that closed, 28 that went pending, and four that were coming soon. So I think that's the largest gap between new listings and pendings we've had in almost two years, it seems like. I mean, it's good to see new listings are back over 40. And I don't see any that closed off market either this week. Oh, so. wow. That is a big change. You're right, David. Usually the new listings and the pending, they usually kind of cancel each other out. Yeah. So again, what we're seeing with new listings is big price tags, big asking prices. We'll see if those big asking prices kind of level out, so to say, if interest rates are going up and seeing if people are able to sell with the price they want, essentially. Mm -hmm. Right. Any questions for the day? Oh, always, David. I was wondering about people who purchase a home with the intent of renting it out for short-term rentals, whether it be Airbnb or one of the other ones. Is that something that the realtor can help you look into because... Is it allowed only in certain areas? How does that work? Well, again, it goes back to the topic we talked about in the past about not getting too involved in those kind of situations. You have to give them the information for them to do their own due diligence. Otherwise, if something were to come up, they're going to say, hey, well, the realtor told me I could do short-term rentals and now I'm having problems with the city. I wouldn't have bought this place if I knew that. Again, it gets back into a liability issue. So 
In terms of Santa Barbara, there is like a no short-term rental kind of stigma within the city. They're very against it, so to say. Mm -hmm. There's been a lawsuit for like, I feel like five years now between city of Santa Barbara and the Coastal Commission. And the Coastal Commission believes you should be able to allow short-term rentals in the coastal zone. Santa Barbara still doesn't think so. Santa Barbara keeps losing their appeal process with the Coastal Commission. So essentially, there's a gray area where you can technically do short-term rentals within the coastal zone and get away with it, but you can't really apply for a permit with the city because they won't give you one. So it's kind of like a really gray area. You can't do it for certain, but you can't really get in trouble if you do it Uh, unless the neighbors kind of get on you and complain to the city, then that's a huge problem. It's a tricky kind of place, but I know people that are doing it within the coastal zone and they're making a lot of money. Right. It is tricky. The subject caught my attention because out here, and I'm in the Fort Myers, Naples area, a lady that I know bought a home in Marco Island, which is either part of Naples or you just drive over a bridge and you're in Marco Island. And she thought she could do these short-term rentals and she found out it's not zoned for that. So it just made me think, boy, that's an important thing to find out ahead of time. Yeah. And that could be a situation where maybe the agent told them, oh, this would be a great short-term rental. And now she can go back and say there can Uh be a problem with that too. (laughs) Right. Right. And she's one of the people who works in another part of the country in the summertime. So otherwise it will just sit vacant and it would really cut into her financial situation. Yeah. And if she was told that you could do it there and then she found out she couldn't, that's a huge problem. So again, that goes back on whoever told her that that could be an option or maybe she just wasn't doing the full due diligence and she didn't have a realtor that was trustworthy in a sense that was able to figure out like, oh, she's going to only live here three months a year and the other nine months she wants to rent it out. So let's find her something that she can rent out or instead they just sold them the first house that came on the market and wasn't either aware of that or maybe told her something that wasn't true. So Mm -hmm. you can get into a lot of trouble that way. And That's just a bad way of doing business, depending on the situation. Right. So as a realtor, David, you would recommend to other realtors that they give the client the information on how they can find out the legalities of it, whether it can be used or not. And you just recommend that they look into it on their own. Is that what I'm understanding? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You guide them to the information they want to know. You can give them like a a cliff notes of the happenings, but you have to guide them the right way. Mm -hmm. And you can know all the information, but you have to have like a source. So like, it's even nice if you prepare ahead of time and know these different factors and have like a worksheet already written up. So you have this worksheet of like, you can go to the town hall, there's zoning information here. This is the stipulations. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you don't have to do it every time. So you're, you're kind of the expert in that realm as well. Right. That would be very helpful. So David, if someone is listening and they wanted to speak to you further, how would they get a hold of you? Yeah, my number is 805-617-9311. And my email is david at davidcharlesallen.com. If you want to look up more about me, website's www.davidcharlesallen.com as well. Oh, well, thank you, David. And can't leave today without hearing about the fur babies at home. How's everybody doing? Everyone's doing great. We got a little window shelving for mango. So you kind of stick it to the glass and it's like a couple little shelves that they can sleep on. And that's this new spot. He just sits there. Whenever he's not out and about, he's sleeping on that thing. Oh, that's so cute. I should get one for my dog, but I'm afraid he might be too big and break it. But they love to be up on the lounge chair so they can peek out the window, even through the blinds. They like to see what's going on in the neighborhood. Right? Yes. So they are very cool. They like it a lot. Yeah. So it's official. Ollie is now a service dog. I'm so excited about that. I took him out and about with me today when I had to get some new tires on my car and he was in the store with me. And then we went to a park because they said it was going to take two hours to get the tires done. And we saw our first alligator from a distance though, David, because I'm a little paranoid that they would go after a fairly small dog. Really? (laughs) Yes. I'm actually just kind of paranoid about alligators in general. 
kind of is too bad because there's all these beautiful places to hike, but people hike right around the alligators. I mean, there'll be one on the trail and they'll walk around it. And that just scares me way too much. I would never do it with my dog. And I don't even think I'd even do it myself. So I think maybe, I don't know, Captain Hook. I'm not sure if that was an alligator or a crocodile, but either way, it's stuck with me and it just scares the bejesus out of me. I think once you live around it, you adapt to your environment. So being a newcomer with all these alligators, it's like, yeah, I think I'm going to not do that. So... You're exactly right. They're so nonchalant about it. Oh, I'm hiking and saw this one-eyed alligator named Joe. You know, they're just like, it's the family pet or something. Yeah, I don't think they're really attracted to you too much and they're not going to come out and get you. But if you rile them up, if a small dog goes up without a leash Mm -hmm. and starts barking at them, maybe they'll be like, all right, I don't want to mess with you. They they probably sense my fear. I'm like, I'm petrified. So yeah, they're probably in their own realm of whatever they're doing. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, well, David, this was really good information. Thank you so much for providing it. It's interesting to watch those interest rates just kind of slowly rise week after week and inflation. And we'll just see where this all ends up later this year. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. Prices continuing to go up. Bidding wars are still happening. I think the most attractive thing right now in Santa Barbara is something that has a view and is remodeled. We're seeing just crazy bidding wars. Anything remodeled too right now is just seeing an insane amount of people paying over asking price. So Wow. I guess people um, just want to go in and have things already done for them. Yeah. And there's a lot of flippers that have been done really successfully over these last two years where Mm -hmm. they're reaping the benefits of this market, so to say. It's funny though, you can tell which flipper did which house because they look exactly the same as the one they did before. That is (laughs) funny. (laughs) I've seen this house before. Yeah, a different layout, same Mm -hmm. finishes, same everything. Every house is going to look the same. Right. Going this way. <laughs> right. Oh, my goodness. Oh, well, David, thank you so very much. I look forward to the news next week. All right, Patty. Let's give you a good next week. All right. Bye. Bye.